There are moments in gardening when you stumble onto something that, well, forces you to rethink everything you thought you knew. For the first minute of this guide, I want to draw you into the turning point that made me abandon the old compost pit mentality entirely. It began with a stubborn stretch of soil, hard-pan clay streaked with sand, the kind of ground that laughs at organic matter and swallows water without giving anything back. After years of trying to coax life from it with kitchen scraps, leaves and traditional compost piles, nothing really changed. The top inch improved, but the layer beneath stayed dead. It wasn't until I ran a simple, almost accidental comparison, biochar on one side, layered cardboard on the other, that I realised soil health was never just about decomposition. It was about structure, airflow, carbon stability, and how you set the stage for microbes to take over. What happened over the following weeks reshaped my approach entirely, and it can do the same for anyone willing to test it. The test began when I stopped treating soil as a passive container and started treating it as a living system. The cardboard method had always been reliable for smothering weeds and softening the ground. Layers of it stop evaporation, block light, hold moisture, and break down slowly enough that worms feel at home tunnelling through it. When I set up the test plot, I placed cardboard over half the bed, weighted it down with old wood, and left it to mellow under a light mulch. On the biochar side, I didn't bury it deep, the way many guides suggest. Instead, I scratched it into the top three inches and pre-charged it with compost tea for 48 hours, a step that prevents it from absorbing nutrients from plants during its early weeks in the soil. The cardboard worked exactly as expected, but what biochar did next forced me to rethink the entire concept of soil building. Within ten days of watering and light mulching, the top layer where the biochar sat stayed damp longer than the cardboard side. When I pressed my hand into the soil, the biochar section crumbled more easily despite being treated for a shorter period. This difference comes down to the structure of biochar. Each piece contains microchannels and pores that work like housing for microbes and moisture. While cardboard must break down before altering the soil beneath it, biochar starts changing water retention and aeration immediately. This means that in climates with harsh sun, unpredictable rain, or sandy soils prone to drying out, biochar becomes a shortcut to stability. Understanding why biochar outperforms compost pits starts with the failures of traditional pits themselves. Compost pits rely on depth and moisture, but most backyard soils lack the airflow needed to break organic matter down efficiently underground. Anaerobic pockets form quickly, producing sour-smelling material that takes months to restore. Even when a compost pit does work, it rarely improves more than its immediate footprint. In contrast, biochar disperses easily, doesn't decompose, and holds on to nutrients from every organic material you add afterward. Cardboard is valuable too, but it is temporary. Biochar stays in the soil for decades. What this means in practical terms is that you can treat biochar as a long-term soil savings account, while cardboard is more like a yearly renewal. Applying this comparison to real garden beds is straightforward once you understand how to prepare each material. To recreate the test I ran, begin by loosening your topsoil with a fork rather than a shovel. The goal is to preserve underground channels instead of compacting them. Mix a small batch of biochar with compost tea or liquid fertilizer 
and let it sit until it darkens and becomes sponge-like. Spread it across your bed and lightly work it in. On the other half of the area lay cardboard in overlapping sheets and cover it with two to three inches of mulch. Water both sections evenly for several weeks. You will start to notice differences in moisture retention almost immediately. The biochar section will drain well, but stay damp. The cardboard section will resist weeds and soften the soil beneath it, but only after it begins to break down. The real transformation becomes obvious the moment you plant into both sides. Roots in the biochar section spread outward more freely than downward, filling pockets of air and moisture and creating healthier early growth. This is critical if you grow crops that rely on strong early root systems — corn, beans, squash, or perennials like berries. Cardboard works better for beds where weed suppression or ground preparation is the first priority especially when starting a new patch. But when the goal is long-term fertility, soil structure, and rapid establishment, biochar has the upper hand. What changed my soil forever was the realization that both methods serve powerful but different purposes, and together they create one of the strongest foundations a garden can have. A new gardener can use cardboard to calm a wild patch into submission. A seasoned grower can use biochar to anchor fertility for decades. A survival-minded gardener can rely on biochar during resource shortages because it needs no turning, no maintenance, and no constant organic input once in the ground. If this guide helped you rethink how soil actually works, subscribe to Hydro Haven for deeper breakdowns, historical methods, and hands-on tests that keep your garden thriving. Share this with someone who still believes compost pits are the only path forward. They might be one test away from transforming their soil for good.